I've, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to do it. I, took, I just grabbed a bunch of DVDs that we had there that, that they were all nature videos. They have beautiful sacred music with beautiful nature, ducks, birds, bears, elk, and so on. I took them across to the TV transmitter, and I told the guy, pull all that worldly stuff off the air, and I want you to run only this. Yes, sir, you're the owner. I wasn't the owner personally, but I mean, I was the president of the organization that had, but it was my signature on it, so. So he said, yes, sir. He pulled off all that, all those worldly cartoons and all those worldly programs, and he said, from now on, just this. And I said, we'll bring you more tomorrow. So he put those on. And for the next 24 hours, it was just like, you know, all beautiful praise, hymns, nature, God's creation, God's music, heavenly music. Little did we know the consequence. All of a sudden, our phone started ringing. 60 phone calls the first day. You know what it said? Thank you very much for finally taking the blood off the screen and putting something on that we can watch. Something, finally a channel in Bolivia that has no blood. Well, <laughs> that's all we had to put on. <laughs> so we put it on and at least people, but then they called the next day. You know what? We just left that channel on all day long. We've noticed something. And pretty soon we got a call from a, from a, psychi a psychiatrist. He said, um, I, I just wanted to tell you something. We've been watching this channel for several months now, and, and we've discovered something. Whenever our depression patients watch your channel, 100% are cured. What, what is it? He said, there's something about that. And, and he, he just called to say thank you. He said, whenever we get a depression patient, immediately we get out a pen, we write, watch only the Adventist channel. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, they're cured. And we said, don't watch anything else. Just don't watch that one. So they just leave it on all day long. They come back and go, doctor, thank you. That was perfect. Well, I was confused. I didn't know what, it, what the secret was. And then the ambassador to Germany called me. He, he said, I'm not, I'm not a Christian. But I've learned something about your channel. If I leave it on, my home, which is usually full of tension and strife and arguments. And he said, when we leave your station on, the light comes on, the tension disappears, we can sleep at night like babies, instead of staying up late and rolling in bed, just beautiful sleep. He said, I just called to say thank you. I don't, I don't believe in any of the things that you teach. <laughs> but I can't turn it off. It's the only channel I watch all day long. And I thought to myself, if he keeps watching long enough, he's going to believe it. Because you can't place yourself under the influence without having some consequences. Well, we begin to learn through this. We begin to find out that there are certain types of things that happen if you submit yourself to the influence of heavenly music and all of God's creation. That's why it's so beautiful to go out to nature and go camping. Why? Because it's God out there. He created nature, and there's something about the influence of nature that just... just fills your soul with God, right? And, but, it, but sometimes, sometimes we mix worldly things with God's things. So we learn not to mix the two. We just, we just put on beautiful music. I call it celestial music. The kind, by the way, um, today there's a lot of opinions on music. I'm not a music expert and I don't have authority to be an expert. I'm just sharing my experience I, I just, we just decided, how do we know what music to put on there? And we decided, when we get to heaven and the gates of the new Jerusalem swing open and we hear the angels, suddenly the music comes streaming out of, those, of, the, of the gates of the new Jerusalem, that's the kind of music we're going to put on here. I don't know, is, is that a good measure? Huh? At least you can't go wrong, right? So if you, if you use that standard, that's what we do in all our television networks. We just use the standard of the New Jerusalem. Whatever comes out of the gates of the New Jerusalem, that's the music we put on the air. And then everybody has to decide between them and God what that, what that standard is. But it's kind of a high standard because the angels don't mess around. They have beautiful music, worship music. 
And whatever that standard is that God leads you to, it's a good standard to have. And so the closer you get to that, it's kind of like walking in heaven's environment. And so therefore, these people who view these television, they don't know what that is. All they know is that when they turn it on and leave it on, they can be in the kitchen and they're listening to the music. Of course, there's messages and there's children's programming and then there's health programming, a little bit more music. And then there's educational programs, a little more music. Then there's some preaching services and a little more music. We always put music in between all the programs because the people get desperate if they don't have their music. If you really want truly addiction music, heavenly music will do it. Because once the people in the streets find out what it does to their homes, they can't turn it off all day long because when they turn it off, something happens. It, it, goes, it gets dark inside. I was riding on the bus with, uh, with uh, going, down to, going down to Miami with a young Hispanic young man. And we were talking, and, and he said, uh, what do you do? I said, I'm a missionary pilot. I'm going down to South America. I'm going to catch the plane um, in uh, Miami and fly down. And he said, oh. And I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a warlock, a male witch. Really? Well, what do you do? Well, he said, people pay me. People pay me to, uh, to cast spells and um, to do things. Like, for example, I, I make a lot of money from men who come to me and they say, I want that guy's wife. They pay me the money and I always deliver. In no time at all, that wife leaves her husband and goes with him. It works every time. Really. And they don't have any choice. Very little choice. In fact, he told me, I can take your wife away from you anytime I want. Really. I said, I don't believe you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. <laughs> and finally, he said, how come you're so convinced I can't take your wife? I take everybody else's wives away from him whenever I want to. I said, because I know you can. I serve somebody. Oh, you're a Christian. Yeah. Oh, I take Christians' husbands away from wives. No problem. Really? I said, you can't touch my wife. He said, okay, okay, okay. L let me ask you a few questions. Do you watch soap operas in your home? Nope. He said, do you watch the world's Hollywood movies in your home? I said, nope. Do you listen to the world's music, rock music? Do you listen to to the world's pop music? I said, nope. And then he said, do you lust after women? And I said, with God's help, no. And then he said, okay, okay. You're the only one that I can't touch. <laughs> but so many Christians, they go to church, they say they love God, they do love God sometimes, but they mix a lot of the devil's things in their lives, and he said, I can still get at them because I have access to them as long as something of the devil is in their homes. That taught me a lesson. You see, you can still belong to God. You can love God and you can still have God's ministry and everything, but if you give the key to your home and to your life to the devil, he can still get into your house. Now, God can still protect you, but he won't protect you perfectly if you voluntarily give the, the house key to the, your enemies. And so I learned from that lesson. He said, okay, okay. As long as you don't stick the world in your home and your life, you belong to God. I can't get into your home. I can't touch your wife. I can't harass you. I agree. You're the only one that I can. But most Christians are not in that category. Is he right? Amen. Yes, he's right. I was in Norway. And I had a week of prayer at our Adventist college there. Uh, senior, senior high school and 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 post-secondary education. A whole week. And then the young people started coming to talk to me. Two young ladies stayed on Friday night. I was coming up to the last day. Two young ladies sat, waited for me patiently. My wife, we went, finished at 9 o'clock. My wife went on to bed. I stayed there till 11 o'clock talking to young people. And then these two ladies, young ladies, were there at the end, and they said, Uncle David, because I'm Uncle David to all the young people, by the way, and that's my name for you too. <laughs> the General Conference Youth Director, Pastor Muganda, is a big black man from Africa. He's, a, he's older than I am. But we roomed together in England recently at a youth con congress, <laughs> and he started calling me Uncle David. <laughs> I, I said, how can I be Uncle David to you? That's okay. That's a good name to have, Uncle David. But um, 
these two young ladies waited. I, I said, do you mind if I sit down next to you? My back is tired from talking to everybody. Sure, sure.